43. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, and then we have this balanced equation. We have N2O3 gas, which will break down and yield into NO gas plus NO2 gas. And they give us that temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. Now, from this temperature, we have to find out the equilibrium constant. And remember, the equilibrium constant is capital K. Now, there's so many different K values, right? There's Ka, there's Kb, there's Kc, Keq, Kp, right? It doesn't matter what equilibrium constant we're finding out because there's basically only one formula that goes with equilibrium constant and temperature. And I wrote it down at the bottom here. So I'm just going to bring this equation up. Now, if we want to find that equilibrium constant, which is capital K, it's E, the, the E button on the calculator, is raised to all of this stuff. So there's three variables here. So it's E raised to the negative delta G, so free energy, divided by R and divided by T. So let's see what we can plug in. Let's start with the R value, right? They didn't give us the R value, but that's because the R value is always a constant number, right? The R value, if we're using energy, gives free energy, delta G, it's 8.314. Now the units for 8.314 is joules per mole times Kelvin. So it's the R unit that tells us what the other units are going to be. So for example, that temperature is in Kelvin. So I can't use the negative 10 degrees Celsius. I have to convert the temperature, negative 10 degrees Celsius, into Kelvin. But that's okay, because right, Celsius to Kelvin, you could plus 273. More specifically, you could add 273.15, which is what I'll do. So negative 10 plus 273.15 is 263.15. And now we have that temperature in Kelvin. So great, we have the R, we have the T, the E is on the calculator, we're solving for the equilibrium constant. So the only thing that's left is delta G. Now, some of you might say, well, that's okay, right? Delta G notch, that's standard, right? I could go in the back of the textbook to find out what the delta G values are for each individual component, products minus reactants, and then plug it in. But if you're going to use the value in the back of the textbook, that has to be at room temperature, right? 25 degrees Celsius. We're unfortunately at negative 10. So we can't do that, unfortunately. So we have to think of another formula that links delta G with temperature. And that's this formula down here, right? Delta G equals delta H minus T, there's the temperature, times delta S. But if I'm trying to solve for delta G with my temperature, I need to know the delta H, the enthalpy, and the delta S, the entropy values. But where am I going to find those? Now those we can go in the back of the textbook. And that's exactly what I did. I went in the back of the textbook to find out each individual delta H value for each substance and the S value for each substance. And we're going to use those values to find out the H and the S. Okay, well, let's look at delta H first, right? What's the formula for if we only have the H values from the appendix? Well, that's this formula right here. It's delta H for the whole entire reaction. Rxn is reaction. This will always equal the sum. That's this little thing right here. It's the sum. So add them all up. It's the sum of all the products minus the sum of all the reactants. So 83.72 goes to N2O3 gas, 90.25 goes to NO gas, 33.2 goes to NO2 gas. But now are those numbers going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, it goes by the coefficients of the balanced equation. There was no coefficient in front of N2O3. That means that you only had one. There was no coefficient in front of NO, so you have one of those and no coefficient in front of NO2, you got one of those. Whatever those coefficients are, you multiply them by the value. Now in this case, since they're all one, all the numbers are gonna be the same, but it's good practice to just kinda you know, key yourself in that you have to do that every time. Now, all you have to do is sum up the sides, right? On the product side, it was NO plus NO2. So it's literally this number, 
plus this number. You don't have to add anything on the reactant side because there's no two substances. So the reactant side total would still be 83.72. And now I'm going to go to the calculator to find out what the product side is. 90.25 plus 33.2. 90.25 plus 33.2, that looks good to me. And I get 123.45. Here are my totals, which I'm going to plug in for my equation. So my delta H for my whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, which is 123.45. And I'm going to minus from the total of the reactants, which was 83.72. Okay, so delta H for the whole entire reaction is this value right here. So I'm just going to pull that up minus 83.72. And I get 39.73 units would be in kilojoules. It's in kilojoules because the Delta H values are in kilojoules per mole, but all these ones that we times to buy are moles. So if you have mole on the bottom and mole up on top, they cancel. And now we just have a delta H value. So I'm just going to hold that number here. We now have to do the same thing for the S values. And the good thing, because just like we have the formula for delta H, I could basically use the same formula, which was this, right? But now all I have to do is just erase all my H's. So goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And I just put in my S's. So delta S for the whole entire reaction would be we have... The reactants over here, and we got the products over here. Sum them up, and then just subtract them. So same thing as before. Take those values that you found, times them by the coefficients. So in this case, it would be all ones, which is good practice. And then add up the two reds. The blue value would still be 312.17. And now the product side, 210.8 plus 240. 210.8 plus 240.1. Yep, that looks good. And then we have 450.9. Now let's just plug it in. Delta S for my whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, which was 450.9 minus the reactants, which is 312.17. Now let's find out what that delta S value is. So 450.9, so this guy, minus 312, whoop, not 302, 312, 312.17. Uh, 312.17, and we get 138.73. Units here would be joule per Kelvin because the moles also cancel out. All right, and now we have that number. So now finally I'm gonna use my delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Keep in mind, I wanna solve for delta G. Now I have H, S, and T values. Now look here, the guys though, right? The delta H is in kilojoules, but the S is in joules. They have to match. So either one is gonna be in kilojoules, right? They're both gonna be in kilojoules or they're both gonna be in joules. Which one would we change? Well, I would always go back to the R value. Essentially, this is the formula you want, right? And the R value says that we need that unit in joules. So what I would do is I would just convert the kilojoules into joules. Kilojoules into joules, you just got to times by a thousand. Similarly, you could take the decimal and move it to the right three spots. So this is the same as 39730, so 39,730 joules. So now let's go for it. Delta G equals the H value, which is now 39,730, minus the temperature. We already converted that. That has to be in Kelvin as well, so 263.15. And now I'm just going to times it by my S value, which is the 138.73. All 
I could plug this all into the calculator at one shot. So let's go for it. 39730 minus the 263.15. And then I'm going to times it by the answer from the before value. That was the delta S. Press enter. And there you go. So my delta G is now 3,223.2000 and, you know, 2.005. And that's now in joules. So we're almost there. Notice how I didn't round because this is not the final answer. Generally, we only round at the final answer. But now we know what that delta G value is going to be. This is going to be the 3,223.2000. 005 joules. Let's plug it in. Equilibrium constant equals E on the calculator raised to negative fraction. So I have the 3223.2005. And then I have the two values 8.314. And then I have the temperature 263.15. What I would do first is I would just simplify this whole thing, right? And then I would take the E value and raise to that number. So K equals E raised to what is this? Well, I'm just going to take this number. And actually, what I'll do, maybe I'll say negative. Grab this number because now it's a negative value, right? Negative. I'm going to press divide by 8.314. through and four. And now if I want to, you know, divide by the 263.15, I'll just press divide. 263.15. And there you go. Okay, so now we're raising the E to the negative 1.4732 dot dot dot, right? I'm going to keep all the numbers. So now let's see. This is the final step. What's my equilibrium constant? The E button is second LN if you're using the TI-84. And then I could just go up there, grab that whole number, press enter, and there you go. Um, now I'm going to use my sig figs. Let's see, probably four sig figs because in my final calculation, I had four here. That was the lowest number. So I don't have to put this into scientific notation. 0 0.2292. No units for the equilibrium constant, and that's it. This is the final answer. Okay, what did you think? Thank you so much for viewing the video. Thank you for being part of this YouTube community. I I know I I know I say this all the time, but I really am grateful for all you. I'm I'm so glad that you guys are learning from this channel. And thank you so much for viewing our videos. All right. I will talk to you soon. Happy studying. Bye-bye.